one out of three people are experiencing a heightened feeling of loneliness or isolation today, according to some research. And this gives you a 33% chance to have no friends at your wedding. Even if you're currently going into social places like the library, the gym, or even like a museum, it these places don't really do anything for your social skills unless you actually go and talk to people in these settings. Otherwise, it actually just opens you to more anxiety and neuroticism. So the reason why I wanted to bring that up is because since so many people are getting affected by it, they don't really know what to do. They know that they have this problem, but they don't know how to, they don't know any steps that they could take to at least alleviate some of it. Now keep in mind, I'm not like a psychologist, I can't solve your problems, but what I can do is I can give you some form of advice or some form of, some sort of task to do, so that way when you get done with it, you'll be able to at least feel a bit better if not to be able to get past your anxieties or neuroticism at least a little bit excuse me for one moment so the first point i want to bring up about uh like a first tip that i want to give you about getting rid of this anxiety and neuroticism is actually to stop treating people as neutral. There's this weird concept in society today where treating people as enemies is considered to be worse than treating people as neutral, but I don't think anyone's properly weighed both options. And most of us already have an idea of what treating an enemy would be like. So I'm gonna dive into what treating a neutral is going to be like. So treating people as neutral sounds enticing at first because it allows you to not treat people as enemies, right? But the problem is, is that it gives you this gray line where you're not able to actually see the difference between an enemy, a friend, or neutral, or what, whatever would be a neutral anyways, if it actually exists. That's the, that's, sorry, that's the real thing, is that if it actually exists, which, personally me, I don't think so. But that's a whole different thing. But besides that, it sounds great because you'll be able to actually make more friends until you realize, are you an enemy or a friend? When you identify someone as a neutral, you start to, you don't, you don't see the difference. It's like, it's like putting on how do I put this? It's like putting on uh, two sets of 3D movie glasses. It just doesn't make any sense at the first one. You know what I'm saying? So, it's just our brains, like, consciously and subconsciously, we don't actually understand what, what neutral is. Like, I wouldn't want to go up to somebody and be like, oh, hi, neutral. Like, what? You don't, like, you know what I'm saying? No one goes up to somebody and, at, and tells them that they're neutral. We either, you're either a friend or you're an enemy. It's simple as that. So when you put the two together, you begin to understand that, oh yeah. Or you get this understanding that being a new, that classifying someone as neutral actually causes you to get more anxiety because you start to ask questions like, okay, well, who's a neutral? How are you a neutral? What do I, how do I treat a neutral person? Is this acceptable? Is, not, is this not acceptable? You're not gonna find people who know what a neutral is. Like, you can't you know, you just look up how to treat people as neutral and get some like sort of accurate result because that's subjective in the first place. So, this really opens up your mind to a lot more anxiety than what's necessary in your life because you start to develop this, it's, it's a silly like understanding of, okay, can't treat them as an enemy, can't treat them as an enemy. But 
You have to understand, not everyone's an enemy. Especially in a society where there's also this, like, inclusivity type, like, message. No one's really, like, enemies. So, the fact that you're treating people as a neutral makes no sense because if your purpose of it in the first place was to um, replace pe replace the uh, the possibility, by remember this, possibility of treating somebody as a neutral, or as a, sorry, as an enemy, then you, you missed the point because no one's an enemy anymore, right? That's why, like, world peace is even a topic in the first place is because people aren't actually that much enemies anymore. There's some enemies, don't get me wrong, but, like, it's, it's not anywhere near as many enemies as we would have in, like, past cultures and whatnot, right? So, this ability, or this, this, um, what is it? This anxiety and this mental health damage that's caused by not having the correct, I, I, like, the correct identification method, like, instead of identifying people as the two, like, either friend or enemy, you try to identify as neutral, it actually ends up blocking you from being able to grow and ask questions and become a quality person in today's, just as, as your life goes, since you're constantly going to be unraveling in your neuroticism and you won't be able to bring a message to people confidently because you're going to think that oh I want to make sure that I'm doing this right and that I'm treating them right which will honestly it'll stem into much more of a deeper problem and it'll disguise itself as other things before you actually realize this is my social anxiety yeah this is my social anxiety is that I don't treat people as friends or enemies. So, and another point to bring this up is that it, I find this interesting is that the society's actually used this uh, this method and it actually hurts you because you're oh my, sorry, I'm like trying to bring it together here. You're your survival instincts are the is the ability to determine if someone's a friend or an enemy. That's why we can subconsciously understand this concept so well. But when you begin to introduce this neutral area, you don't know exactly when this when it borders anything. So what happens is the neutrality it swallows up the friend and the enemy. So you end up treating everybody as a neutral and you just don't get across whatever you want to do correctly. It just doesn't, it doesn't develop into the way that you want it to be. So, and I figured that it's actually very interesting that if you think about it like this, the modern society or whatever you want to call this is actually using the survival instincts against you for its benefit of being able to strengthen whatever numbers that they have compared to you having nothing because you're too busy contemplating neutrality over the thing that's worked for since we've existed, right? So, also, another point to bring up about treating people as neutral is that no one actually understands the full form of anxiety that comes up from this, right? For starters, the there is no timeline for anxiety. What I mean by this is that there's no one that's going to be no one's going to be able to stop the anxiety from happening in the moment. Right? Like they're not gonna be able to stop it from striking at twelve fifteen in the afternoon or like nine twenty one. Right? So it's you can't control what you think about as a neutral. So these two things are in common. And also, we've already tried out 
um, the output of neutrality for almost a century now, and it has not worked at all. What I mean by this is when Hitler was neutral toward NATO, or NATO was neutral to Hitler, he took that opportunity to... He identified them as enemies, and he took Czechoslovakia, he took that entire, like, little group of like European countries and then invaded Poland before the war started. The war started after he invaded Poland. So he already had half it took half of Europe for the like leaders of NATO to understand that treating someone as a neutral does not help you at all. It doesn't get you anywhere. And in fact it diminishes you later on. Hence, Hitler being able to take over literally all of Europe, except for England, I think, if I remember my history right. So, we know this doesn't fucking work. Why do we keep doing it? It just, it doesn't make sense to me. So, this form of indecisiveness in a hyper-competitive society is going to weaken you and kill many but you're able to avoid it if you become aware of it like you are right now. So, good for us. And, well now, I'm going to go on to my second point. I brought up identifying people as a neutral first, so that way you'd help, it would help you understand what I'm going to bring up here as my second point. And the two, con the two connect in a way where, without one, the other doesn't make too much sense. So if you happen to skip here, I'd like you to go back and watch the first part all the way through. And then once you've gained a good understanding of that, you can come over here, watch the second part and so forth. Anyways, my second fact is that you miss out on high quality people that you would want to connect with and become a part of in their communities and whatnot because of your neutrality mindset. Think about this. If you're the owner of multiple companies, your time is your time is strict. You're not exactly free flowing throughout the whole day. And you have two people that want to come up to you, you should be able to answer here which one's going to get a response. Now I have two I have two people I made up here. Mr. Beats here, who's always anxious. He thinks everyone's out for him, and he believes that his message was weak and that he was nervous. He he didn't really it's kind of more like a clinginess hope to get someone's attention and get someone's hopefully maybe respect for the way he is right now. So then he has some social proof that he doesn't have to change, right? This is, how, this is how deep anxiety can go, right? And that's just because you identified someone as neutral. And then you have Mr. A tier, who believes that this guy could be his friend before he even sent the message. He has a strong but short message, and he knew how to craft it. He was... He put his time, he put his effort into this message towards the person because he wants to not blow his chance to be connected. And he values himself as equal to the business owner. That's the key point, is that with anxiety, you're not going to be able to develop yourself in a way where you actually put more value onto yourself. Or self-esteem. It's really like self-esteem, but... It's obviously, it's, I don't like to say that because it sounds more childish, right? Because like self-esteem, when I, when I think of the word self-esteem, it makes me think of elementary school and how they're like, oh, you go and build up your self-esteem, kiddo. It's like, okay. But when you've been indoctrinated to miss out on these on these high quality people because you sit there and believe that people are should be identified as neutral it really just weakens your opportunity to be a better person overall as you already mentioned 
And if you still think that people should still identify as neutral, it tells me two things. It tells me, number one, that you're someone who needs to hear this the most. So I'm glad you're here and I want you to stay. And number two, it also shows me that in your current state, you'll never be able to become a high value person yourself, which may be one of your goals. If not, okay, that's fair. But even as a general, as like a general life advice or a general just thing to recognize is that treating people as neutral often, it often, uh, it miscongrues how you want to interact with people compared to what you're thinking. And when you do that, you often get a very bad mixture of self-deprecating thoughts and neuroticism, which will just eventually lead you to not being the person or not being capable of doing the things that maybe you wanted to do right now or maybe that you wanted to do a year ago, right? And also, let me remind you that to stay where you are and to take an action will only further damage your mental health and distance yourself from the correct beliefs, traits, and habits which will bring you to take any task or goal that you bring up and to be able, be able to complete it with quality because... Well, you actually, you already know why. Even if you, hmm, sorry. Right, yeah, that's what I want to say. Is that since, even if you think that you're okay, because believe it or not, anxiety or neuroticism, it works as the same way as a person entering your house. Even if there's only one door to the house. If someone enters your house, they're still in your house. If only that one thing is making you neurotic and anxious, you're still neurotic and anxious. You're not like, you're not just magically skipping out because you decided to watch this video. That's not how it works. You have to actually take action in order to solve your problems. So, with that being said, before this video ends, I'm going to give you a tool which you can start using now to fix your loneliness in addition to being able to track if you're heading in the right direction. Now for this task, it's nothing, it's nothing super difficult It's in itself, but I'd like you to take about a week's time at least between when you start this task and when you finish it. And I will, I will tell you now that being able to do this task will require you to put in some work, especially if your timeline is a week. If it's not a week and you put it longer, you can be a little less, I can be a little more lazy about it, but I still want you to actually complete it, yeah? So, here's the steps that I'm going to go into, and they will help you be able to make make yourself better socially, have less neuroticism and anxiety, and they'll be able to bring you to a higher state of yourself that you're more uh, proud of. So to start, I want you to get a journal or get something, just something that you can write in. Maybe it's a piece of paper, I don't care. And I want you to write I want you to start writing about how fulfilled you feel in this area of your life that we've talked about so far. And it'll take a little bit of time, most likely, because you'll actually unravel a lot of things that you didn't know about in your writing. And that will obviously allow you to get a deeper insight within yourself, which is more value, which is really valuable as is. But if you're contemplating the trade between right now to use the time and what it can be later, I'll put it to you like this. To start reversing the loneliness epidemic is a much more powerful reason to push forward beyond your comfort zone and to be able to 
trust me with what I'm saying so that way you can solve that loneliness which will that will be projected into the future instead of your current problem so after you wrote this I want you to try and interact with people as much as you as much as you're comfortable with because obviously there's some introverts and extroverts so on and so forth but like don't bullshit yourself don't be like oh I'm an introvert so I'm just gonna sit by myself all day when you're not right like me for example I'm like right in the middle I'm, I'm all right in the middle if I get too much then I want to relax if there's if there's a good if there's a good time for me to focus and do stuff I'm fine with being by myself that's just how I work but for you it's probably different so take your own personal things into account here and try to interact with new people every day. Preferably, I want you to do this in person, but I do understand that that's actually very difficult to do because it requires you to go to places and you're kind of, especially when you're trying to go out to a place just to talk to somebody, it feels kind of odd. So you, you don't really like, you already get more neuroticism as is. So if you can do it though and you want to push there, great go for it i'm not i'm rooting for you but <laughs> god just sorry i just thought something stupid in my head but if you can't do that then going online is okay but you need to talk use the teeth the tongue use your language to talk to people you can't just like sit there and just like listen and be like oh i'm socializing no you know like you're obviously you're not so after you do this for a little while, then you can actually, oh yeah, right, apologies. So now you can go leave this video and take these actions. I don't want you to come back to this video until your weekly timeline is complete. Now what you can do is you can go like, you could just like the video or subscribe or like save it to your watch later or something. So that way you know that in whatever time period you have, you can actually come back and do that thing. Or finish this task, sorry. You, you, know, you already know what to do. Now. So you can, you can go now. I'll see you here later. If you just returned from your weekly social training or whatever timeline you had, congratulations. If you haven't, fuck off. But to those who dedicated their time to this, here's the second step. Go back to that journal entry that you did before. And I want you to either edit it or make a new one, which is still about how fulfilled your social life is you're obviously going to end up comparing the two but the point that i want you to get is that this practice allows you to you'll most likely oh actually here go write about it go pause the video and write about it and then return to it or well like just unpause it when you're done but to those who are done now it's it really is about how you can see um that you'll be surprised how much it actually has changed, right? Because oftentimes neurotic people and people of this sort, they don't think that they can really get out of it. But I wanted to give you some tool or some way to, to actually get out of there so then you can become a better person yourself that you are more comfortable with and proud of than someone who's just sitting there and being shy or someone who already left the video, right? And they didn't even do the thing. So I was just like, okay, great. Th those are people that really need it, though. You know? It makes me sad. But if you were one of those people before, but you changed now, good job, man. All right? And so that's basically, there you go. Yeah. So now you officially have learned what the loneliness epidemic is. And why it's caused one third of people to have varying mental health damage. And 
you know how to fix this so then your mindset, your beliefs, and your traits won't negatively impact your future and instead assist you in the journey to destabilize loneliness and bring social connection back into the fucking spotlight it deserves so that you are not lonely and depressed and sad and anxious and unable to develop in the ways that you want to do they want to do so and as always we're here to help you help them <laughs>